Hello there and welcome to Broad Lane Leisure. My name is Adrian and I'm about to demonstrate the internal workings of a Bailey Unicorn 2015 model range. Uh, the workings that we are going to go through is going to be featured in all the Unicorn range that they produce on the 2015. It's just that uh, there'll be different locations for switches and things like that. But what I will demonstrate is where they are on this particular model range, which is the Seville. So to move on a little bit further, I'm going to bring you now to uh, the, where Bailey locate their batteries, which are in the floor of their construction. Uh, it's a little bit different, so we've removed the carpet. Uh, normally it's uh, just after the axle is where the battery would be located. And this is this particular battery in this, in this vehicle I'm demonstrating. It is just to show you where the location is and to show you that we have actually got a battery in line and working. This particular one has also had a mover fitted to, uh, to the vehicle. So these cables that you see coming through the side here, uh, all down here, going down to the terminals are mover cables as well as the actual uh, supply going to the Caravan Electrics. I'm just gonna put the lid back on. Uh, and in a similar area, you may find it located under the refrigerator as we have in this particular model range. We've also got the consumer unit and we have attached the services. What I'm referring to by the services are uh, the gas, the mains, the water, and obviously the battery, which I've just shown you. When we have got mains electrics available on the consumer unit, uh, we should do a test, which is this little T button here. And when I press that in, the RCD switch, residual circuit device, should uh, trip out. So let's just see if this does work for me. There it goes. That's showing you that that is correct. Um, and anybody using mains electrics is perfectly safe in the caravan. So all that you need to do is just turn that back on again. And then the MCBs, miniature circuit breakers, uh, below the switch itself, it tells you what it serves, which is the charge of the heating system and boiler and the sockets. They're individual fuses uh, or circuit breakers. And basically uh, all that they do is just trip out like so. If there's a failure on something, all that you do is take off the offending appliance that's caused it to trip and then reset the trip itself. Below it, we have got a bank of 12 volt fuses. And on this bank, it tells you on the front face here, uh, what that particular corresponding fuse serves. So there's two light circuits within it. Uh, that's the water pump, etc., etc. And as you go down the bank, you'll see it. But on the very top face, it will also tell you what the ampage of the fuse should be in use. So we've got 10 amp fuses, fives, tens, as you can see, 15 up there and a couple of 20s on the far end, which are from the battery uh, and fridge usage. Um, on the 12 volt side, if you do get a blown fuse, yes, all that you've got to do is discover which part of the circuit's gone down, take off uh, the faulty fuse, put it back in again with the new fuse, away she goes. The blade fuses, which you can get from most caravan accessory shops, certainly we have them in our accessory shops, but also uh, some of the car uh, factors will also have them. So uh, readily available anywhere, really easy to find. Thank you. In this short video, I'm going to show you the Bailey con uh, control panel on the 12 volt side of the system. So uh, you need to just come around to where it is by the door. And I'm just going to make sure we've got good voltage, which is by the case of pressing that little switch there. And it indicates I've got 13.7 volts available to us. And that's all that I need to worry about there. Uh, this is the master switch. So as you can see, that has now gone out. Uh, and that's now back on again by putting the master on. There it goes, let's just see. The second switch below the master switch is for uh, internal lights. And again, that's the master switch for all those lights, as you can see. Okay. And the one to the right-hand side of that is gonna be for your awning light on the outside of the caravan. It might, no, you can't see any difference on that one, but I know the awning light works, but that will be for the awning light operation. And the final one, immediately above it, next to the master switch, is going to be for the water pump system. As you can see, you get a run light come on there. Uh, I'm going to leave that there for a moment and explain when we do the water system about that light. So that's the just general on that particular panel. Three, two, one. In this video, I'm just about to show you how to get the water running through the tap system uh, on, on the Unicorn range. So the control panel above the door where the pump switch symbol is, turn that on. Uh, we have established already that we've isolated the drain down valves and they're in the closed position, which is horizontal. And we've also made sure that all the taps are closed uh, and not open. 
because if that tap was over there and this tap was open and we turn that pump switch on we could end up with running water and we'd be straight through over the work surface so just make it that you're in control of it come to the the tap itself turn it to the cold position which is the lever as i am right now and just open the lever up and within a very short space of time we should get a nice steady flow of water cold water coming through on that cold side once we've established that you could just rotate that valve straight with the lever to the hot location and what initially it should do is put two gallons or 10 litres of water into the boiler. Once the boiler is full it will then come through the tap system here uh, as a nice steady flow as we're seeing and uh, I also know that that water has been on and it's operated uh, and heated up. So to continue with the demonstration of this uh, 2015 unicorn uh, it will vary from model to model but on this particular layout, there's a double light switch here, which uh, is going to be for the down lighters. And when I turn off this second, uh, the, in, the outer one, I'm going to see the down lighters go off here, but also on the near side of the vehicle. So the first two down lighters on the lockers are operated off that switch when both switches are off. Other than that, panel illumination here. And then we've got the spotlights, which have all got individual switches on and obviously those rotate to where you want them to be uh, so that's that one off one in the corner at the front moving down the near side again another switch here and on the off side here so coming through to the kitchen area we've got a double light pole switch here uh, one's going to be for the overhead locker lights uh, above the lockers and the second one is the under locker lights so that's the overhead locker lights now turned off and that's the under locker lights turned off all right, so moving on to the uh, near side again, we've got quite a large switch underneath uh, and we've only got the operation of the overhead lights. There's nothing on the underside on this particular model range. And that's as you see the uh, lighting circuits within the front half of the vehicle. Moving through to the toilet compartment, uh, what you're gonna find here is a pull cord uh, which turns on all the lights within this area. Uh, the down light is in the shower cubicle, as you can see. So there's no individual switch for that. But you have got an individual switch on this particular one, uh, which you can change to an off position. So the shower compartment is still on, but this one's turned off. Uh, and I have either on one bulb or two bulbs. So it's a little bit of a variation that you can actually uh, change yourself but it's still operated off the pull cord as a master. And that's what you've got on the toilet compartment area. Thank you. One. In this video, I will demonstrate the window operation in a unicorn. Um, these use uh, lever latches, uh, and the lever latches also on the window stays themselves. This is completely sealed. All that you need to do is turn the lever locks themselves, as you can see, the latches. And if I want to, I can either have the window completely open or I can put it into a semi-lock position. I say it's semi-lock because you can, if you wanted to, force fingers past that window ledge there. And if you are, if you're really strong, you could wrench that window open. So it is semi-secure, but not 100% secure. So that's what we have on the on the latches. When you do want to open the window, raise it to the desired location and just rotate those little thumb screws there, one on either stay, and that would keep the window in that lock position. Uh, if you do want to change it, obviously for lowering or for greater airflow, just do as you require. Um, and they're just straightforward window stays and lever latches. And that's what we have there. The fly screens and blinds that are on this particular model are a Remis variant. Um, so it says the name here, Remis. Uh, it's just, a, that's the fly screen which pulls down from the top, lowers down from the top, and the night blind raises up like so. So that's for nighttime use. Uh, they're not sprung loaded, so these aren't gonna drop down. They stay where you put them. Uh, but I just wanna draw your attention across to uh, the little symbol that you see on the top left-hand corner. It's the round symbol with the book inside it, just over there. Um, so what that means is please read the owner's handbook. What it's gonna be in reference to is with the fly screen and blind, if you're on very strong sunlight, south of France, say something like that, similar circumstances to that, or even in Cornwall, uh, 
not knocking out the Lake Districts or anywhere like that, <laughs> but uh, in very strong sunlight, you do want to have an air gap at the top of the blind. Please don't use the blind in a, in a fully sealed location like that because uh, the heat that it's generated behind the blind, these have got silver backing on the back of them, reflects the heat back against the Perspex window, i.e. against the glazing. And uh, what can happen if you've got in very intense heat, it will uh, distort that Perspex. Uh, the reason why the symbols there is telling you read the handbook because it does explain that if you are going to use it in strong sunlight, by all means use the blind, but just have it so you have got an air gap at the top to allow heat to dispense or disperse internally inside the vehicle. In this video, I'd like to demonstrate the uh, Thetford Caprice Mark III uh, oven system. Um, as you come to uh, the front end, we have got all the valves in operation. We've got a piezo igniter here, which ignites all the gas rings. And then here we've got a little red light, which does illuminate up when you are going to use uh, the electric ring located at the top edge, back, back rear edge here. So I'm going to put it onto one just to initially see whether the heat's coming through. And yes, it is. So I'm going to re turn that off again. Just turn it through to number six. You can rotate that in either direction and that's getting warm again. So that's how the electric uh, ring works there. On the rest of the remaining part of the hob, the three remaining gas rings are of a variable size. So just be aware we have got a slightly uh, smaller ring on the left hand side to uh, the rings on the on the right hand side of the uh, hot plate area here. This dot signifies it's for this gas valve here. So turn the flame or the gas on, press the valve in, strike the igniter, away she goes. Count 10 seconds, release. That's onto a low setting, that's onto a high setting and off. The next two valves that we come to, these two valves here are gonna be for, the, this one's for the front, this one's for the rear on the right hand side. I'm gonna operate both at the same time. I'm multitasking. And uh, there we go, both are uh, alight. Release after a few seconds. There's low on the front, there's low on the rear. And turn it back up to the full flame and back off again. So we're coming to the grill area. Now when we operate the grill door opening here, uh, I just want you to be aware there's a slight heat shield here that you can actually pull physically forward. Uh, it's a design that uh, allows any heat coming out of the grill area to travel past go past the valves themselves so they don't overheat. They don't, you don't burn yourself in other words. Um, the actual grill itself is defined by that white little stripe there on the top of that square as the oven is uh, a white stripe on the lower half of that square. Turn it to the full flame, press the valve in, strike the igniter and away the flame goes. Uh, once you've ignited it, just count a few few more seconds after after it's ignited, just to heat up the thermocouple, then release. It's still on, on the full flame, uh, and there's the low flame. And that is that part of it. The grill pan uh, that's in these vehicles, it, like all grill pans, they've got removable handles. Uh, they, this particular handle comes in at approximately 45 degree angle, locks onto the the uh, the plate and then you can use this for use uh, obviously for washing purposes though they make it so the handle is removable so that all you're doing is washing the grill pan or the fret itself that can travel in there for transit or you could put it into the pan storage area which i'll explain there now so to gain access to the pan storage area uh, there's no visible catch or, or latch what you have to do is with the thumb push in the center of the glass panel uh, which releases it. What you're doing is pushing that lock latch in place. All right, so to open and close it, you do need to push that in. This is the pan storage area here. It's not massive, uh, but we have got a series of few of uh, a gas manifold tap, isolation valves. So if we want to isolate the boiler, for instance, on the hot water, we would rotate it through 90 degrees uh, or open it back up again. So long as it's in line with the outgoing pipe, it's on. If it's as it was there, vertical, it's off. And the quick explanation of what the uh, gas valves operate is all on the front face of the uh, inner glass panel there. So when you come to close the uh, pan, pan area, just make sure you push again on the glass to lock it in place. It's quite a different uh, operation on some of those. And I'm gonna to move to the oven 
Uh, you don't need to have this extended. This heat plate doesn't need to be extended when the oven's on, but it can be if you so desire. It's your preference. But turn it right round to its highest setting, which is number nine. Press the valve in, strike the igniter, and there's the oven in its operation, up and running. Uh, count a few more seconds, release, it's on. You do have to have the oven door raised for heat to build up into that area for it to then be able to regulate itself according to wherever you've left the gas valve to be. I could have it as low as a quarter, uh, but that flame's not gone down yet because there's not sufficient heat in there to recognise the, uh, the regulator. All right, but it will regulate itself accordingly. They are equivalent to domestic uh, regulos, i.e. Regulo 6 is the same here on a Regulo 6 setting here as, as a domestic appliance would be. The nice thing is Bailey have provided two on shelves in these models, which is uh, quite nice. Sometimes you have to purchase additional ones, but they're all in place. And the only other bit I need to point out is the data plate that you'll see on the side here, that little silver foil. Um, if there is a failure of this particular oven for any reason, uh, we ask you to forward uh, information, the data plate information, and then we are able to order new parts for you. It could be that you've just lost that control valve and I need a new one. Uh, still send the data plate, regardless of whether it's the same knob. Uh, I just need to uh, have further information so we identify the right part. So just referring to this particular Vision Plus booster box, slightly different from the one that you may have seen on the previous videos. Uh, it is their standard variant. In other words, it hasn't got the signal finder where you've got a series of three lights, illuminations. Normally red is a poor, poor signal, amber would be good, and green, yes, perfect signal. Uh, uh, on this particular booster box, what you're gonna have to do to find the best reception is by rotating the aerial, but watching the television picture while you're doing that. So it's just, Look at everybody else's aerials, which direction are they facing in, and then uh, put your aerial to that location, whether it's in the horizontal plane or vertical, um, accordingly. Um, and then basically just tune it, turn it until you find the best signal on your television, and that's the best way of using it on that on your system. Thank you. And just on the Baileys, uh, they tend to obviously now put carbon monoxide detectors on uh, on vehicles, but also a smoke detector. Uh, these two are located by the door. Uh, this particular one's got a, a, a throwaway battery. It's a nine volt battery. When I say throwaway, of course, dispose of it accordingly, responsibly. But this particular unit, uh, it's a five year product and after five years, it should be replaced uh, with a new uh, carbon monoxide detector. Uh, Please don't renew the batteries in them. They're not for renewing. Thank you. So if you do have any uh, further questions or, or want something answering, I would say please refer to your owner's handbook. Uh, this is a particular one that Bailey produced. It's an A5 size. And at the front section is all about how the vehicle works and setting up of the equipment. On the reverse side is the service side. So do keep these booklets and uh, get them stamped and date with service schedules, i.e. something similar to this one. Uh, they are very useful and help to keep the warranty, should there be a warranty in, in uh, running at the time. It obviously keeps it in date, uh, but they're always uh, the first port to call for reference. After that, by all means, if you can't uh, work the reasons why you've got a failure on the vehicle, give us a call uh, and we're a business that's open seven days a week and we'll always try to assist you a bit further. Many thanks for listening to this video.